we have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. 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 Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside head coach Dan Marley as we uh, begin this final episode of the Dan Marley Show. Kind of a look back at the Western Athletic Conference tournament and a tournament that everybody was excited about here at GCU. You were excited about it. I know you had some nerves going into that tournament and uh, you were able to pull off a come from behind victory against UMKC in the opener. Yeah, a little nerves, anxious. I mean, you know, when you think about it, five years in waiting and we've worked extremely hard to get there. So anytime you, uh, Going into that situation, you're going to be a little nervous, and uh, it showed at the beginning of the game. I yeah, think it was yeah. like 22 to four, and we knew we were going to have problems against UMKC because of, uh, you know, they play the five guard system and uh, stop them and get to the basket. And our guys kind of had a hard time at the beginning, and then we just righted the ship, and it was a really hard battle. And you know, when they threw up that last three pointer, didn't go in. I tell you, it was uh, it was a moment that I'll remember for a long time because just the relief of being able to get that first game over and uh, being successful was huge. So I was very proud of it. It's tough when it's five years and there's just so much build up to that first tournament and into that game. I'm sure it just permeated throughout the roster. Yeah, our guys you know, felt the pressure and they knew what was expected and, and how hard they had worked to get there. So uh, I expected a little bit of nerves, but I didn't expect it to, to go to 22, and four, 22 to four early. Uh, but as I said, our guys really showed the resiliency uh, that they showed all year and fought back and had a great win. We saw it all tournament long, but certainly Alessandro Labor came out on fire. 29 points in the game, uh, one off a season high. Eighth game at uh, at least 20 points in the past 13 games coming in. Uh, Alessandro just uh, shined in the tournament and shined in the second half of the season. Uh, did a great job, just all because of his work ethic. Uh, very talented kid, but really hardworking. And, and from the first day he sat on campus, uh, he knew what he wanted to be. And. Um, uh, we did a good job of, of getting the ball, especially in the second half, of using the size, um, making him our main uh, option as far as the post up. Uh, Alessandro did a good job of not only scoring around the paint, but also stretching the floor and making threes. And then, uh, you know, a pretty good pass or something he's going to have to work on. But uh, for a freshman, it was uh, a great season. You saw that that spark right when he stepped on campus. That he knows where he wants to be. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I knew he was very talented, and uh, you know, not knowing him very well because of the, I really didn't have a chance to see him uh, with him being overseas. But when he stepped on campus and just his work ethic, uh, the type of person he was, uh, how much he wanted to learn, not just offensively he would always ask me defensively what can he do better on the pick and rolls and just uh, very quizzical about that kind of stuff so I knew that this is a guy that uh, for a freshman had his head in the right place. The second game of course the semifinal matchup against Utah Valley a team that was on a roll coming in the offensive firepower atop the whack and you uh, they didn't give you a scare this game your team. Well they did they gave us a when? scare uh, in that second half. I mean, we came out and really uh, took it to them. Alessandro made three quick threes. Josh made a couple jumpers and had a good post-up move early. And we really jumped them early. And then in the second half, they fought back. Uh, and they got it within, I don't know, four or six or whatever and had made a run. And, and again, our guys really fought back and ended up making it a pretty convincing win. You know, I think it was 75 to 60. But there was a point there it could have went either, either way in the second half. And our guys really dug in. and. Uh, just a tremendous, probably the biggest victory. Well, it is the biggest victory that we've had here since I've been here because to get to that second game and knowing that if we win this, we're going to be in the conference championship and have a chance to go to the NCAAs was huge, and our guys really stepped up. You really leaned on the younger guys, obviously, in that first game with Alessandro, but uh, Josh Braun stepped up after being quiet in that opener. He and Keontae, Keontae Vernon also had uh, double digits for him. Keontae was huge. Uh, he had a really good tournament. Uh, did a good job of being physical, taking the ball to the basket. Uh, just, you know, his will and, and the way he played is good. And then Josh, again, started our game off. We gave him a little post-up, scored, got a momentum going a little bit, made some shots. So uh, those two guys were big. Speaking about runs, a championship game, New Mexico State, uh, they won an early run and uh, it was kind of playing catch-up throughout. Well, I mean, we started off okay. I think we were up 18-14 or right around there. We knew it was going to be a physical game. Uh, they were a very talented team, had been all year, had a terrific year, but uh, just didn't have enough. Um, not because our guys didn't try, they played hard, but uh, Jones was really yeah. good. Again, I think he had 19 rebounds, had 22 the night before against Seattle. We didn't have any answer for him, um, but you know, I thought we played hard. We just didn't have the talent to beat those guys. What can you say about your team and their first year tournament eligibility going to the championship game? Proud of them. Yeah. Proud of them. Like I said, a lot of expectations. Um, and they stepped up and did what they had to do and got to that final game. It just wasn't enough, but very proud of the way they uh, stuck with it and, and fought. And, 
I really represented GC well. What a great experience too for the Alessandro Labors, those underclassmen that will be returning back to the tournament uh, a year from now knowing that they, they made it to the championship. Well that was, that's one of the reasons why we had to get past, past that first game. You know, a lot of those instances you have to be able to crawl before you can walk and if we were lost that first game then next year we were like okay, you know, but now that we've gotten to the finals we get a taste of it, we know what it's like to play three games uh, in a row in a tournament setting and, and that kind of pressure so that was a, a very valuable uh, a lesson for our younger guys to learn. Well, what about you? What what did you garner from it? I mean, you've seen postseason playoff basketball at the highest level. What what experience or anything did you take from from going to the tournament? Uh, you know, just the excitement of it. You know, I've, I've felt that obviously as a player, um, haven't been able to you know, kind of feel it as a coach um, until this year when we were playing for something. And uh, you know, I took a lot away from it. Uh, not only you know the pre preparation that we always do, but just. Uh, the manner in, on which you got to stay calm and try to help your guys through it because you know what they're feeling. A lot of times they feed off the head coach of, of how their mannerisms are and things like that. And I'm a fiery guy. Everybody knows that. I'm very excitable. But sometimes you just got to step back and, and kind of lead by example. And uh, I think I've learned a lot. Well, I know I've learned a lot this year. All right. Stay with us. We'll have more of the Dan Marley Show after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the Vice President of Athletics here at GCU, Mike Vaught. And we have a whole litany, a whole long <laughs> list of things I've talked about with you, Mike, because, uh, wow, there's just been a ton of athletic events. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to men's and women's basketball. First ever mm -hmm. postseason trip to the Orleans Arena, Las Vegas, the Western Athletic Conference Tournament. Both teams faring very, very well, opening round victories. Well, it was exciting for our students, for our fans, for the student athletes to get to participate in the tournament this year. It's our first year to get to do that. Uh, Orleans Arena is a great place to host the event. The city of Las Vegas embraces all the tournaments going on. So it's just a great atmosphere. And uh, I was really excited for Nicole Powell and the, and the women's team to get a win. And, and they really finished strong at the end of the year. And it was great for them to finish like they did. And, and then of course, Coach Marley and the men's team going to the championship game. Uh, for the first year being eligible to do that, I thought it was fantastic. So uh, really proud for all those people and exciting. It was a great experience for our fans and everybody that went up there. Yeah, you mentioned the fans, the Havocs yeah. were out in full force. Yeah. Uh, the support came right from Phoenix on, on yeah. up, up to Las Vegas. Yeah. It was a great atmosphere at the Orleans. And, and just the beginning of signs to come and to go to the championship game for the men, what a great accomplishment. Well, and I also read where the attendance was up 52% this year, and I think that's because there was a lot of Lopes fans made mm -hmm. the trip to Las Vegas. We had a great turnout. Thank our fans for making the trip up. Uh, a lot of good support, and I think we brought some energy to the tournament that, that hadn't been there in the past. Speaking of the tournament, uh, San Antonio, the Final Four, you just returned from, from that yeah. trip. What was that experience like seeing Villanova? You know, San Antonio is a great, they do a great job hosting events. Their sports commission does a fantastic job getting those events to San Antonio. And then the Alamo Dome, they do a great job hosting those events. So there were 68,000 people there both nights. Um, we were down there close to the Villanova bench and they're a really impressive group. Uh, their team's really, really uh, a good looking group of kids, first class. But all the teams that participated, I thought, were, uh, were, were really first class organizations. You know, when you look at how they operate and do their business and uh, great games. Loyola Chicago was a great story. It was fun watching them. But the San Antonio, you have the Riverwalk and all those people that converge on the city. So uh, they get to do some unique things around the Final Four, like they had all the bands on a boat on Friday night, going down the Riverwalk playing the fight song. Uh, had all the awesome. fans on the Riverwalk, and then Villanova's team came down the river on a boat after the game, after they won the championship. So it was a great time. There's always great weather in San Antonio and hospitality and food. And um, like I said, there was a lot of people there from all over the world. It was a fun time. Transition, and you mentioned weather. A little bit different in uh, Minneapolis for the NCAA uh, swimming. <laughs> it's really, this is your old stomping ground. Yeah, I know. Well, you there's remember like the six, first question. Eight inches up there already. They, they can't get the <laughs> open here in, uh, for the Minnesota Twins, but but the swim and dive and Coach Schaefer yeah. were up there. It's really excited they had an indoor pool. Yeah, thank uh, goodness for that. It was my first question before I went, but you know, that it was, it was a really great atmosphere. It was sold out. Uh, I was amazed how many people attended. And uh, when you see our, our student athletes participate and, and you see the, the leaderboard and they list the who's in what lane and where they're from, you know, it's Texas, Florida, Stanford, Cal, North Carolina State, Grand Canyon. Nice. And when I looked through two days of that, uh, there was only three mid-major schools that participated that I saw. So it was a big deal and it was great representation for our university and our conference and was glad I was, was able to go up there and support them. They did a great job. 
Also, uh, men's and women's golf in full force as well. The men's WAC tournament April 23rd in Hutchinson, Kansas. Yeah. The women's conference tournament coming up April 16th here at the Legacy Golf Club uh, in Phoenix. So golf is underway as well. It's underway. Both are very competitive this year. Uh, those programs have been built over the last three or four years. Uh, the women's team have already played probably our, our best competition in the WAC tournament mm -hmm. uh, in some other tournaments, and we fared well. And uh, Mark's done a great job with the men's team. They've got three wins this year already. Um, Hutchinson, at that time of year, as you know, it could be windy, it could be tornadoes, it could be snowing. Yep. So it's going to be really interesting, the weather, how the weather affects the competition at that course. It's a fantastic course there, uh, but that time of year, you don't know what kind of weather you're going to get. So I'm going to make that trip up with them. Okay. I'm on the uh, sport management committee for the WAC, so I have to go mm -hmm. and kind of help do some things. But uh, it's going to be a fun trip, and we're really expecting both men's and women's teams to finish great in the tournament. As we close out the academic school year, men's and women's tennis also approaching their postseason tournament. The WAC tournament starting April 27th at the Mesa Tennis Center right here in, yeah. in the Valley. We have the opportunity to host this year yeah. and Greg and those guys do a great job and we wanted to take advantage of that and um, so we're going to host the tournament here this year and nice. we're going to have great weather ordered up for them. We're going to have a great banquet for them the night it starts. We're really looking forward to being able to host the WAC tournament this year. The uh, men's and women's indoor track teams did really well. Of course they won the uh, Western Athletic Conference indoor titles both the men and the women. The outdoor just getting underway, and uh, but the indoor. I mean, Scott Marshall. What a what a great story for him. He goes to the NCAA's yeah. and represents GCU again on the national stage. Yeah, it's really going to be cool. I'm going actually to the WAC track tournament at the University of Kansas yep. uh, coming up here. But our track teams have done a. They, we have tradition established now, and Coach Flood and his staff do a great job, and and they've had great results this year. So really looking forward to them finishing strong here. We told you we had a ton to cover here. Of course, we, we haven't even touched on baseball, softball, as well as men's volleyball. They could be hosting a postseason quarterfinal matchup as well. But baseball, that brand new sparkling facility, and softball, it's fantastic for fans to come on out and check Absolutely. out both sports. Yeah. yeah, it's two of the better facilities in the country. Uh, for baseball, for softball. We had a good win against UNLV last yeah. night in baseball and really conference plays just starting. So both are positioned, I think, to really finish strong and have a good run in this conference tournaments. I think we covered quite a bit. Thanks, we did, Mike. thanks for having me. <laughs> All you right. bet. My thanks to the Vice President of Athletics, Mike Vaught. We'll be right back with more of the Dan Marley Show. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Lopes Insider, Paul Coro and Paul, uh, Wow, the when men's and women's Western Athletic Conference tournaments in Las Vegas were excitement personified because it was the first trip for both teams, for the fans. You could sense the excitement in Las Vegas and both the men and women opening round victories. Yeah, I think the WAC appreciated GCU being there because attendance <laughs> shot up for this tournament with the uh, the Lopes showing up big time. And what games uh, they offered on both sides, you know, the women recorded the first historic Division One postseason victory. The men had a wonderful comeback in the first game, really starting to even get out of the first round, and then played one of their better games of the whole season to beat Utah Valley and get to the championship. And then just felt that one step away, and you could just taste how close this program is to the NCAA tournament. Just one win away from going to an NCAA tournament in their first year of eligibility. That just being said, we know how high the bar is, and New Mexico State is a, is a formidable opponent. But one win away to go into the NCAA tournament, what an accomplishment. Yeah, especially you look at that New Mexico State team. They had a, a big time season, had early top 25 victories, yep. very senior laden group. So to put yourself on a, on par with them, they challenged them twice in the season too and re really could have won either of those games. And now they know with the types of guys they have coming back. You know, Allie Labor being freshman of the year, being first team all whack, you know, for all classes, yep. shows that they have a linchpin to the program for the next three years. What Oscar Freyer did to improve his game, you know, we know he's an all defensive guy who stopped just about every top score in other teams, but he improved his shooting a ton too. So now you've got those two key starters returning to build around, you know, the other uh, five returners coming back next. Yeah, Damari Milstead got some time in that backcourt, uh, got some extended minutes. You want to see about him, his development as well. Keontae Vernon, physical presence, no longer going to be here. Josh Braun, you know, he's been a staple here at GCU. Some big shoes to fill for, for Coach Marley and his staff. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Braun's been the face of this program. He's, you know, Marley's first recruit really set the tone for where they were headed and what he he became as a player here to be the second time, second all-time leading scorer in basketball program history for any level. And then Keontae was just the heart and soul of this team. He was the one driving the team on the court, off the court, in the locker room, just had so much passion, uh, brought that tough presence, uh, boards, 
screens, did all the dirty work, as he says that nobody wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, as Coach Marley said in that post-game press conference at the uh, WAC, you know, he knows that he needs to, to go out there and get the players, and that's what his, he's tasked to do uh, before the season starts in November. So it'll be interesting to see what the team looks like come November of this year. Yeah, you know, they've already got one really big uh, signing yeah. in uh, Finky coming from Champaign, Illinois, a four-star recruit. Uh, you know, you hope that he can step into those guard shoes that Josh Braun filled so well. Not the same type of player and certainly not, you know, expectations to be, uh, you know, preseason player of the year type. Right. But Josh Braun carried himself in a way beyond the court that was really a, a staple of the program with being a straight-A guy, Mr. GCU, unbelievable, amiable guy. Um, and now they they want to bring in some players to fill those types of roles, you know, not only on the court, off the court. They need those tough guys on the court. They need, you know, Dan Marley wants that hustle and passion that, you know, you know of him as a player. Yeah, no doubt about it. For Nicole Powell, no Bree Mobley, no August Touchard, no Jessica Gajewski from the Arcs where she was money. So she's just about as busy as Coach Marley is this uh, this off season to, on the recruiting trail. Yeah, that coaching staff did an unbelievable job in their first year to lift all those players and, and become the, the whack player that they were in their first season. Now there's another tough coaching job to come because as you said, those three seniors carried a lot of the scoring. So uh, they're big time hitting the recruiting trail. They've already made some headway there. Uh, they have some returners who got some experience this year, uh, but you'll see this staff gets to put more of their stamp on the program now going into year two as they bring in uh, players that will build the program for the long term instead of these seniors who got them through that one transition year. Nicole will be recruiting, but she's going to have a detour to Chicago <laughs> July 2nd to the uh, National High School Hall of Fame. What an honor. Only the third woman in the state of Arizona to go into the National Hall of Fame. Yeah, we didn't know we were admit a National Hall of Famer all season. You know, Nicole Powell uh, is legendary in the state of Arizona. You know, she's been a great WNBA player, an all-star. Uh, she's done things in college, to been a Naismith Player of the Year finalist three times. But this was what she did at, in Phoenix, right here at Mountain Point High School, where she was a five-sport player, won championships in discus, what tennis, she play? badminton. She didn't win a championship in basketball, yeah. of all things. They got to the state championship game three times, but she's the player uh, of the century of all time in Arizona. Nobody was better than her, and now she's having that same kind of success here as a coach. We don't have too much time left, but so many accolades in other sports. You know, Nikolaev for swimming and Mark and track. I mean, the NCAA honors and, and going to the NCAAs, what an honor for these individual athletes and for their respective sports. Yeah, same thing for all these others do, going into their first Division One postseason chances. And Nikolai becomes an honorable mention. And Scott Marshall as a pole vaulter gets second team All-America. Now we'll see what baseball and softball can do because of their yeah. success so far. And they project to do well in WAC and golf. Yeah, all these spring sports got a chance. Yep. Well, it's so great to catch up with you. We'll, we'll talk to you again, I guess, in the fall. All right. All right. Up. Whoops <laughs> Insider Paul Coro, our guest, stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show coming up after we take this time out. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. The 2017-18 men's basketball season was one to remember. Let's take a look back at this historic postseason tournament eligible season.
Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside head coach Dan Marley in this final segment. We talk about next season. Some news came out during the course of the season. You were added to the Legacy uh, Classic, the Wooden Classic. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw that or I not, but there's that. some quality teams in that tournament. Yeah, Miami, we want, Seton Hall. Yeah, we want to continue to up uh, up the ante a little bit. Um, I'd always talked about, you know, starting about two years ago, that we wanted to get into some really good tournaments on neutral sites where we play some really good teams that we have opportunities to win. It's it's hard to go on other people's home court, obviously, to, to beat those uh, kind of teams. But if we can get them on neutral sites, I think we'll have a fighting chance. And uh, we're excited about that. It'll be good, uh, you know, uh, publication for, for GCU and where we want to go. But to play that type of opponents is something we'll always try to do. And you got the home and home with Boise State. So Boise State's coming in here. Really good team. Uh, a uh, team that we uh, lost in, in overtime, double overtime uh, at Boise State. Um, and a little unknown fact is, is uh, Loyola Chicago went to Boise and lost by 34 this year. Wow, and now 34 they're in, points. Yeah, now they're in the Final Four. So, you know, anything can happen. Uh, that was one of our better wins. And Boise's got a great program, so it'll be exciting to have them in our gym next year. You're losing the physical presence of Keontae Vernon, uh, Casey Benson, the point guard. Your thoughts about recruiting and, and some of the holes that you need to fill? Well, we got a lot of holes that we have to fill, and we are, we are going to go out there and we're going to um, do everything we can to, to, to continue to expand our roster and get um, better players, and we're, I'm very confident that we're going to do that. Now that we're eligible for the tournament, recruiting has been easier. Uh, the type of players that we are uh, recruiting, not only fifth-year guys, uh, high school kids, junior college kids, is a level up where we need to go. So. Uh, we're going to probably have a, 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 a different looking roster next year, which will be good um, with some guys coming back. But I'm excited about uh, what we'll be able to do next year. Is there a mindset or a mentality? Obviously, you have to be skilled, but is there a mindset to play for Dan Marley yeah, at you GCU? Gotta, you got to love basketball. Uh, you got to be a winner. You got to be a guy who wants to compete uh, every day in the classroom, in the weight room, on the gym. And uh, you got to focus. Uh, you know, I tell these guys that uh, here's what we're supposed to do. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to drive you. And if you're not that type of player, don't come here because I'm not going to be happy and you're not going to be happy. So I've made it abundantly clear to our recruits that uh, what our expectations are and our expectations are to win the WAC, to go to the, win the WAC tournament, go to the NCAAs and be a top 25 team. And that takes an awful lot of work. Uh, you know, just not the two hours that we put in the gym uh, during practice, but it's what you do outside the gym, nutrition, weights, uh, mindset, classroom, all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to demand a lot of our guys and, and the guys that are come here are going to understand that. I wish I could say you're going to have a, a nice carefree summer, but it's uh, just about as much work as the regular season. Yeah, was. but I'm excited. Like I said, we've, we've built a, a really good uh, organization here and it's just only going to get better and I'm excited for the things to come. All right, good luck. We'll see you, you in November. Thank you. Start of another season. Uh, thanks to head coach Dan Marley and thanks to you for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.